In this video, you'll have everything you need to start streaming from your Mac using OBS on 17 Live. If you're watching this video, you're probably a Mac user trying to figure out how to stream from your computer onto 17 Live. Personally, I like using OBS or open broadcasting software. Given that it's the most affordable option, it's free and it helps me level up my production value by adding zoom calls to the stream, anything from multiple angles on cameras, cool layouts, transitions, and all sorts of good stuff. In this tutorial, we'll be going over what OBS is and what it can do, the bare essentials when it comes to equipment, how to go live, finding your stream key and URL, how to best optimize your audio and video settings, how to make everything look good, any basic troubleshooting you might need, and tips and tricks to use when going live. In essence, you'll be ready by the end of this video. What is OBS? It's an open source broadcasting software, and it uses all the sources available on your computer, whether it's cameras, microphones, graphics, images, videos, and you can compile them into scenes, creating the layout of your choice. And being that it's open source, it allows any developer to create add-ons and plugins to make your OBS experience more enjoyable for free. Of course, there are alternatives to OBS, whether it's browser-based solutions like StreamYard or even other broadcasting software such as XSplit or Streamlabs OBS. But in my opinion, OBS is the most affordable, most efficient, and most hassle-free solution you can have as a Mac user. To download OBS, simply head to obsproject.com and download the latest available version for your Mac. Now onto the hardware you'll need. Of course, there are many different kinds of setups or configs you can use going live from OBS, but given that I'm a singer, musician, podcaster, and sometimes gamer, I will be going over the bare essential list of what I use to stream. Starting with my computer, I'm using a 13-inch MacBook Pro with an M1 chip. It's not the ideal solution when it comes to streaming from OBS because the Intel Macs will have more optimization given that they won't need Rosetta to run on an M1 architecture. Meaning that the newer Macs might run OBS less efficiently than older Macs. But you shouldn't worry too much about that as long as you have 8 gigs of RAM and enough memory to always store all of your assets for your stream. Now your internet connection is going to be really important. You're going to want to have stable speeds and you're going to want to prioritize Ethernet cabling over Wi-Fi. Meaning that if you have a solution to plug your Ethernet cable directly into your Mac, utilize that as it will give you a more stable and more powerful connection, meaning more secure for your streams. You're looking for speeds of 30 megabits of upload and download if you want to run a smooth stream. And you can head over to speedtest.net for example to test your connection on the spot. Next step is choosing the camera that suits you. You can go full out with a DSLR or mirrorless camera using a capture card and all sorts of different solutions like these. You can use a webcam, whether it's a cheap one or even more expensive ones, or you can go for the integrated webcam with your computer or an even cheaper solution, which is what I was using when I started streaming, is utilizing whatever old phone you have or extra device you have and turning that into a webcam. Using softwares like Epoch Cam or Airium Webcam, you can turn any device with a camera into a webcam for your streams. Next up is having good lighting. As you can see behind me, I have two Elgato key lights, which is a little bit overkill if you're just starting, but make sure you have enough light to get a bright and nice clear image on your streams. You can start by getting a cheaper ring light or something that will cover your whole face when you go live in order to have the most control over your image if you're using a cheaper or less expensive camera. Next up would be your microphone. If you're gonna be a podcaster, an ASMR streamer, or any streamer that doesn't require pro audio, I would suggest you go buy a USB microphone and that will work just fine for any purpose you might need. However, if you're a musician or a singer like me and you wanna have better quality audio on your streams, I would recommend going for a sound card like the Focusrite Scarlett or the Steinberg UR22 like the one that I have and plugging your microphone directly into that using an XLR cable. 
My microphone of choice for anybody looking to start is the Shure SM58. It's a dynamic microphone. It's the industry standard when it comes to vocal dynamic microphones. It's $100, which is the best in its category. It's great for singers. It's great for talking into if you get close as well. And most importantly, it's very, very, very sturdy. I've had this for over 10 years and it has never failed me. Now that your mic's plugged in, your lights are on, and your camera's putting you to your best advantage, it's time to head on over to OBS, put it all together, and start streaming. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to 17.live and click the Go Live button on the top right of your screen. This is gonna take you to the live setting options, and we're gonna go through each of them right now. First is a stream title. This is what all your followers are going to see when you go live. You're going to want to avoid generic clickbait, uh, but go for something that will make the viewers click and that relates to the stream and entices them to come join you. We're going to put live test OBS for the sake of this test. Next is hashtags. There are two hashtags you're going to want to choose that are going to be shown on the hot page right on your profile. If you're doing a raffle, you can use hashtag raffle. You can use hashtag giveaway. Next up is category. This allows any user to find you based on the category of stream you are in. There are many categories to choose from based on your streaming needs. Selecting an event is very important. We won't go into events here, but you should always be in one if you know what they are. You can also create your own event, but again, we're not going into the events right in this video. And last but not least, you're gonna choose portrait or landscape depending on which layout you wanna have, and we're gonna go into that right in OBS. Once you hit create streaming, you're gonna get a push URL and a stream key this information is very important, so hold on to it. Now that you've opened OBS, here's what it looks like before you set up anything. Uh, the first thing to do is go to settings right here, which is gonna open all of the settings. Going back to our live settings and selecting the portrait or landscape mode, we're gonna go to video right here, and this is where we're gonna choose the resolution of your canvas. Right now, it's set to 16 by nine in 1080p, but if you wanna choose nine by 16, all you have to do is reverse the numbers you see right here to 1080 by 920. Make sure to select the right FPS, 30 is recommended, and the scaled resolution is what's going to get outputted to your actual stream. The resolution you want is 720p as 1.7 Live allows up to 720p streaming. Hit apply. And as you can see, our stream canvas has changed to portrait mode. Portrait mode has its advantage on 1.7 Live as it emulates the mobile streaming feel, which is where most people are going to watch you from. But it is true that landscape streaming offers more real estate on screen to create a cool layout. Next, you're gonna wanna go to output and select the bit rate of your stream. The maximum recommended bit rate is 2500 kbps for uh, 1.7 Live, which is what we have selected right here. The encoder needs to be on X264 as well. Next are the audio settings. Audio is where you'll feel the difference between a Mac setup and a Windows setup when it comes to streaming. The most difficult part is getting your audio from your Mac onto OBS. The best way to do that is to download Black Hole from Existential Audio. This is an audio routing app that'll allow you to route your audio from your desktop, from your Zoom calls, from your pro audio softwares like Logic or Ableton, right into OBS. Just enter the information right here and download it for free. Once you have it installed, you're gonna create a multi-output device by going to Audio MIDI Setup. This comes with your computer so you don't have to worry. Now you're gonna see that I've already created a multi-output device before, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna create a new one by going to the plus sign, create multi-output device, and here I'm gonna select two things. You're gonna select the regular output which you hear your audio from. So for example, if you wanna hear your audio through your speakers, you select MacBook Pro speakers. In my case, I use my sound card, my Steinberg UR22, so this is what I'm gonna be selecting as my first output. The second output is gonna be, of course, black hole two channel right here. 
one thing that I like to do as well and select the master device as Steinberg or whatever output you usually use in your case and hitting the drift correction on the black hole. It's important to note that when you plug your headphones in and out of your computer, your output device is going to connect and disconnect, which means that the MacBook Pro speakers option might be here and might not. And you're going to want to check on your multi-output device before your stream every time to make sure it's all selected properly. And the last thing to do is to go back to your OBS and in audio settings, the global audio devices are going to have to be set up right here. Your desktop audio, as we just said, is going to be selected as the black hole 2CH channel. When you hit apply, you will see that on your OBS, you'll have your desktop audio right here. Because I'm not playing anything, you can't see any audio being transmitted right now. The last very important setting to worry about is the stream panel right here. This is where you're gonna input your very valuable server push URL and your stream key that you got from your live settings page on your 17 Live profile. The service has to be set to custom and in the server bar, you're gonna paste the push URL that's right here on your stream settings. Copy that and paste it and do the same for the stream key. It is very, very, very important that you keep your stream key private as it can allow somebody else to stream on your channel using your stream key. Now that you're ready to stream, let's start building our OBS. There's a scenes panel on the bottom left of your screen and this is where you're gonna find all of your scenes which contain the different sources which are shown on your stream. To make it more simple, I'm gonna rename this scene right here to base scene. You can also name it chatting scene, just chatting, whatever you prefer. Now to start adding things, you're gonna head to the sources panel and hit the plus sign. And this is where you're gonna find all different types of sources that you can add. In my case, I wanna add a nice little background. This can either be an image or a video. Let's go for an image. I'm gonna call this background and you're gonna select your image from your computer that you prefer. I chose this base image as it'll do the job for now. Stretch it out and center it. Now we have our background. Next up, I'm gonna add my camera by hitting the plus sign and adding a video capture device. Call it camera and select your camera. If you wanna show someone else on your screen, the best way to do it is to add a window capture. The window capture allows you to capture any window from your computer. We're gonna call this one 17 Live because we have a 17 Live tab open. Here I can find all of the different tabs I have open on my computer, all of the different softwares. One thing I always do when I'm streaming is hit the studio mode button on the right. This duplicates my screens into a preview and program window. The preview window is what I can edit in real time and the program window is what the viewers and the people on stream can see. This allows to add a new source without it showing on the stream, adjust it to my liking, and then make it appear using transitions. The basic one are either a cut or a fade. And you can go to the transitions panel right here and add a new stinger to customize your transitions. This is a bit more complicated and takes more research, but this adds a lot of production value to your streams. Now, last thing I wanna add is a title by going to plus text, calling this title, and then adding a nice title to my stream. Choose a nice font and resize it to my liking. Now that we have the different elements, how do I make it look good? Well, you can always use your creativity. In my case, what I would do is get rid of these clouds right here, make my camera bigger, add the stream title in the middle, resize my window, and one little trick I like to do is clicking on the title, going to properties, and then scrolling down to outline. This will add a nice outline to the text, which makes it pop a little more. And here you got it already looking a little bit more organized. But here's a few examples of layouts that I've done on different projects. This was for an interview stream with a content creator. I had three different scenes, an intro one with a nice logo that I had made. You can use Canva, Photoshop, any graphic design software or tool will help do the job. I had a nice coordinated font and the colors matched. 
with a nice leathery kind of feel for the background. And then here we had our base scene with what would be the camera right here and the camera of my guest right under me. Other options include this or this or also this. When you hit the start streaming button, you're gonna get a little bar down there that tells you at which bitrate you're emitting data right now. If your bitrate matches the bitrate that you chose, it means that your connection is healthy. That's a good way to know that when your connection is out or your stream is out, if that's the problem, then that bar will not be green, it'll be yellow or red. Another common problem is having another person's stream open on your computer with the sound on which will bleed right into your desktop audio and can create an echo if it's your own stream that's playing. Another reason for having an echo is using your computer speakers to listen to yourself while you're streaming which will create an echo and bleed into the mic. For that simply use headphones and it will fix it. And last but not least, you should always test your stream before going live by hitting the record button and then checking on your recording right before you go live to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Don't forget that 1.7 Live is a streaming platform designed to help creators monetize their talents, whatever they might be. We host singers, dancers, painters, photographers, you name it. If you're interested in becoming a contracted streamer, you can do so by clicking the link in the description or you can reach out to streamer support at 17.live if you have any further questions. And don't forget to download the app by clicking the link below. Thank you for joining this video and see you next time.